Hey everybody, Steve Burns here. I've been getting a lot of requests for doing a tutorial on the smoke brush, so I thought I would go ahead and produce one utilizing the Wacom Cintiq Companion and also having this workflow of being able to touch, resize your document as well as rotate um, adds a little extra benefit uh, to this, this tutorial in particular. Now, if you want to make sure that your touch features are working accurately, on your Wacom Cintiq Companion or any of your other touch devices, do me a favor, go to my website, access the tutorials link here, scroll on down on the bottom, you'll see the Wacom tablet, target that, let's scroll down right over here, and you'll see the first two, the Wacom, the Creative Cloud, as well as the Multi-Touch in Photoshop. Watch those two, and that was going to, that will get you up to speed. Also, make sure that you are going to have your drivers all up to date. I'm at my Wacom site right now, Wacom.com, target product support. And as that page comes up, right over to the right hand side, you're going to target your drivers. Now, pay strict attention to your particular product as well as your particular operating system. Download them, install them, and then you, you're going to be pretty much uh, good to go. All right, so let's jump right into Photoshop and let's start learning how to make a cloud and fire brush utilizing our Wacom stylus. Now, just before we get started creating the smoke brush, I want to share with you some workflow features utilizing the Wacom stylus. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the F key on my keyboard for full frame. It allows me to kind of pull things around here. And now... I'm going to, and I already have created a brand new layer which we're going to paint on. I've created, I selected Command or Control A to select all. Now, if I start to paint in here, I can now hit the delete key so it just clears out the layer rather than delete the entire layer itself. So it's a nice little workflow. Now, one of my favorite workflows for the brush in Photoshop and I'm working on a PC is to alt and right click drag left to right and that gets giving me sub pixel resizing in Photoshop down down is hard and up is soft let's go ahead and resize it smaller again up right to left up is soft down is hard that's a real nice little feature so I want to set that particular feature for the top click on my Wacom stylus. Now notice how I'm holding the stylus as a side note here between the two middle fingers to allow my thumb to access my two buttons. Why? Because the thumb is the strongest digit on my hand so it's much easier to access using the blade of my hand to sit on top of my Cintiq companion and drag around like so. You're not going to hurt it so that the tip of the pen is hovering about a half an inch above the surface of the companion. And that's going to navigate. All right, so I'm going to set this for the top button on my pen. So you can hit the F key, target my Wacom properties, and under application, I'm going to make sure to target Photoshop because Wacom will recognize any and all programs on my system. So go ahead and hit target Photoshop, target OK. It's, it's already selected. Now I want to set my modifiers for the top button here. So what was that for the Windows um, application again? Right up in here, modifier, alt right click if you're using an, a Macintosh it will be control option left click It's one of the very few instances that the shortcut is different now I'm gonna go ahead and target OK it's been applied to Photoshop let's go over here and test it hit the F key let's go two fingers drag here and watch the brush hold down the top click right to left up and down. I am not utilizing the alt on my pad at all. It's all been programmed for that top button on my Wacom stylus. Pretty nice, huh? Okay, so 
Now that that's been set, one last thing I'm going to utilize are the pressure sensitivity of the pen to apply my smoke or cloud effects. So I'm going to go right over here to the third icon on the left hand side on the, of the options panel for the brush, target it, and I'm going to make sure that my transfer has an option of pen pressure set for both opacity and flow, which it is. So I hit the drop down arrow, you'll notice that pen pressure has been targeted. Now once it's done, make sure you save it. If you, if you don't, you're going to lose it. Go to the top button, new brush preset, call it what you will. I'm going to let it sit, call it by default, just so I can save time here. Let's go ahead and close this out. All right, so now that gives me the ability to press soft, a little harder, a little harder, a little harder, and now I can consider adding various opacities of smoke and steam. Now, if I happen to be a person that's a little bit more heavier handed, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Wacom Stylus properties and make sure that for my brush tip fill, or the tip fill to be exact, I'm going to move it a little bit over to the right by one or two notches. You decide what's, what works best for you. I know I'm a little heavier handed, so I'm going to set it for one notch below the firm. So. Making sure once again Photoshop is targeted, I'm going to go ahead and start painting, go test it out. Hitting the F key on the keyboard to go to full screen mode. And bring my document over. Now I'm going to start to paint, press light, a little harder, a little harder. As you can see, I have a much more con gradual control over my brush. So I like the feel of it. I'm going to go with this. So brush has circular properties. It gets smaller, it expands bigger, it has various opacities throughout its nature, and it also has the ability to rotate over time and expand over distance. So I'm gonna create a brush that's going to apply all those properties within that single brush. All right how we're going to go about it. I have my standard one. I'm going to start painting with black because Photoshop utilizes darker values to define the shape of your brush. And within this circular shape, I'm going to add some areas will be kind of opaque, while other areas is going to be very transparent. And I'm going to resize my brush a little bit so I can alter the nature of the shape a little bit. And I'm going to just tap very quickly to create some little darker spots throughout there. Give it a little bit of a texture feel, just like if you're tapping a brush down on the canvas, it's not gonna hurt your Wacom Cintiq, so go ahead and give it a try. Okay, now I'm gonna make the brush a little bigger and just give it just a softness around the tip, okay that's going to work just fine. It's already selected with the command A. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my edit menu and define that as a brush preset and there it is. I'm going to target OK, hit the delete key, it's already created my brush and if I start to paint with it this is what I have. Alright, doesn't look like smoke yet but we're going to keep working on it here. Now I'm going to want my brush property panel, third icon from the left on your options bar and I'm going to go right over here and tap it. Now I'm going to come right up here to the brush tip shape and I'm going to give it a little bit of spacing. So right down here in the bottom right, I'm going to give it a little spacing. So if I make this brush a little bit smaller, I can get this type of an effect. All right. Make it just a little bit smaller and do this like so, kind of move up and down. Now, not quite what I'm looking for yet. So, each puff of smoke is really individualistic, but it's a whole bunch of them joining together. So, shape dynamics. Smoke rotates. Okay, let's pull this right over here, make it easier to see. 
So under shape dynamics, smoke rotates. I'm gonna go to my angle jitter and pull it over to the right. And you can see right down here what's happening and it's rotating my brush. So if I come over to the right and pull it, if you look very closely, you can see that each stroke is rotating in a particular direction. All right, I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a rotate. Now, what I'm going to do is go to my scattering. Now, smoke scatters, right? So if I come right up here, I'm gonna start to give it more of a scattering effect. Now, this is where I'm gonna wanna tighten up the puffs a little bit. So I'm gonna go right back up to the brush tip shape. And right down here in the bottom, I'm gonna pull them all together. Now look at what's happening there in my preview window. It's pulling them all together. And as I paint, look at what we're getting. Now, I'm gonna go right back to the scattering. My scattering may be a little bit too far apart, so I'm gonna pull it back just a little bit, as you can see here in your preview and we can start to create. There we are, that's what I'm looking for. Now, part of this, the scattering, we have also the count, so that the count will add more at one time. So if I add more of the, of the brush spitting out of the nozzle, like so, then I might wanna consider going back to brush tip shape and giving it a little more of a spacing a little bit more and then test it out okay that's looking pretty good now i'm going to hit and hit delete key again on the keyboard now to help me out here a, a little bit better let's pull this one over to the left just a little bit i'm gonna go down to my background and i want to fill that with a medium gray because a medium gray is a nice little mat that allows you to see exactly what the results are a little bit more accurately so i'm going to go 50 percent gray in target and it's going to feel gray let's go ahead and pull this on back and so if i start to paint we have a neutral color in the background to help us to assess a little bit more accurately the successfulness of this of this brush or the convincing how convincing this brush is going to be now if you notice i accidentally um painted in the background i actually want to paint in the foreground and then hit my delete key to make it go away Let's go ahead and have some more fun. So, going back to my brush properties, I have already dealt with my with my with my my scattering. Now, what I want to do is is start adding the color controls. In other words, smoke isn't just black; it isn't just white. Um, it's a combination of those colors, and some areas are going to be lighter, some areas are going to be darker. Um, in terms of the coloration, some gray. So I'm going to go right over here under the color dynamics and target it. And if I pull this more to the center, watch what happens. See the colors being alterated? If I pull all the way to the left so that you can see the difference, I have solid black. It's painting with the foreground color only. Now, let's pull all the way to the left, or as far left as we as we like, and come back and paint again. As you can see, the two, the foreground and background color becomes very distinct, but it's also adding more of medium gray in between the two. All right, so I want subtlety here. So I'm going to go over to my, my color dynamics, and I'm going to pull it more to the left, almost like a quarter of a way through, and... You can see very subtle transitions and I'll pull it a little bit more and there we go. That's a little more subtle transition that I think I'm going to go with that. Now, if I hit the X key to switch my foreground and background color, now you see that the foreground color will be the one that's going to dominate and it's adding black to it. Okay. And if I hit X again, now we're dominating with black. All right. All right. Now on my options bar I've just noticed I'm painting with overlay make sure that you have normal targeted you probably already had from the very beginning I'm gonna go ahead and and delete this so that you can see um, the effects so once again there we are go ahead and hit the X and it's gonna overlay all right now 
let's add some opacity to it. So I want to control the smoke because the smoke is going to have op opaque uh, qualities to it. So we're going to target the transfer, making sure pin pressure is turned on. Hit the drop menu. Pin pressure is targeted for both opacity and flow, which is the exact same thing as the opacity and the flow here. Okay, is that making sense? So once these properties have been set, let's go ahead and test it. So let's start to press light, a little harder, a little harder, a little harder, a little harder. There we go. We're getting more of our smoke effect. And if we switch to white, as you can see, we're getting our smoke effects. Okay. So I can, again, this can be haze or fog. Okay. We can adjust the size of it. Now, say that I like what I have here. But I think that there could be more variations within each of the uh, brush strokes. What I might do is go right over here to my shape dynamics and I'm going to go to my size jitter and alter the size of the jitter over the stroke. Now watch what happens. Look at that. That's more realistic. Okay. So I make the brush a little bigger. We can see each of the puffs have various sizing, so that starts to be a lot more convincing. Okay. All right. So go ahead and switch the X key, and we have a little more black smoke coming out of there. Now, what 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 do we want to do if we actually want to add a little bit of fire coming in from the bottom? That's what we're going to accomplish next. Now I'm getting a little bit closer. Let's go ahead and press two fingers down and pull it in a little tighter. Two fingers down and drag my document. Okay. And I'm going to just pull it on up to here. And I've rotated it just slightly because I think it's easier for me in terms of how I'm drawing, moving my hand in this particular direction. So I see a nice little smoke flow going on here. And I want to add a little bit of fire. So I'm going to take the foreground color. Now, before I actually do it, I want to save this little brush somewhere else that's actually going to save the properties of this brush, both its color as well as its blend mode. Its blend mode is normal. On the, on the options bar for your brush in the very first icon here, we're going to have our tool presets. Okay. I'm going to save this. If I pull this down, you can see a whole bunch of other presets here. Now, I'm going to hit this button and we're going to call this one, I tell you what, I'm going to call it zero brush, which is going to represent my original brush that I created with black and white in a normal blend mode. Okay, I'm going to target OK. Now, and it's easier for me to track it down now, that's why I put zero right in front of it. Now let's create some new properties. Target the, f the top color and grab yellow. Grab the bottom color, the background color, and let's give that kind of a, a reddish orange and click OK. Let's tell the blend mode for this. Apply a blend mode of overlay. Now, if we say this is a standard brush, it will not save the color properties or the blend mode. You have to do it through a brush preset. Target this, make it a new one, and I'm going to call this one zero brush two. Okay, and that's going to have my yellow and red properties. So that means if I go to zero brush, brush the original brush I created, it, you notice the foreground and background color jumps to black and white. So I can add a little more black in here and hit the X key, add a little more highlights, hit the X key, a little more darkness and press down a little harder. Now I want to add some of the color properties. Go to my brush preset 
and target brush two. And it's once again, it's an overlay blend mode so that now I can start make the brush a little bigger, start to add some fiery properties to this. And now hit the X key and go and add some more, some of this little orangeness. Hit the X key again, add a little more yellow to this coming across. I think you guys are getting the point. Hit a little harder, switch it again, and you start to get a little more intensity in the flower, in the fire. And of course I can create a new brush which, uh, which will utilize something like, let's say a color dodge, which is very, very intense. Once again, I can save that as a preset right over here. And we'll call this one zero brush four. There we go. And in the fire apply it, it really gets intensified. Okay. Hit the X key. Some of these areas are going to get intensified. All right. I think you guys get the point. So once again, you cannot save your color presets with a standard brush, but you can save colors under the color tool preset. That's the only place to do it. And I think that is giving you a really good idea. Let's go ahead and pinch it down, press and hold. And we're going to rotate this downward. 